What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan Christ and today's video is all about the ZXT. This is the 100 hour review. Uh, I've had it for a little over a month. I've put 100 hours on it. Actually, I'm right at, let me tell you for sure, I am at 97 and a half hours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the maintenance side of this. I'm going to show you the uh, air filter and I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that I like and that I've come to dislike about it. Nothing major, but just some little things that I've uh, experienced in these last 100 hours. I'm going to share it with you guys right now. All right, guys, so let me get started. And uh, first thing I want to talk about is the fuel consumption. So uh, it's the 40 horsepower Vanguard motor. Uh, I don't remember exactly what size fuel tanks they are. I want to say they're, they're bigger than five gallon, like five to six gallon tanks, uh, split tanks. It's got the on off switch for the, uh, the fuel, but it doesn't have uh, separate tanks. It all pulls from both at the same time. And I've heard of some people say with the ZX, I'm sorry, with the ZK, that sometimes their tanks didn't pull evenly. And I want to show you guys, I've had no problems with this mower. It pulls from both tanks evenly. I haven't had any problems with that whatsoever. As far as fuel consumption, uh, I've got a 37 horsepower Vanguard, and now I've got the 40 horsepower Vanguard, and I'd say they're pretty comparable. Uh, I don't have an actual time for the 37 horsepower, but I did actually measure this one from start to finish, full tank to completely running out of gas. Uh, I was able to mow for 10 hours and 45 minutes. So that's pretty good uh, when it comes to fuel consumption, staying in, staying in the seat time. Certainly much better than a carbureted motor. So 10 hours, 45 minutes of, uh, of mowing, you know, start to finish, not just sitting there idling. I mean, that's just flat cutting the whole time. Um, so that's, I thought that was really, really good for a motor this size. Now, uh, as far as maintenance, haven't had to do anything on it. Uh, the only thing that needs to be greased are these front casters, and that's, it's not time for that yet. They're still uh, good from the factory. There's no other grease points. I looked at the belts. The belts all look good. There's no cracks. And I will say this real quick since we're talking about the belts. So maybe it was just luck of the draw. Uh, but I've got a mid-mount Z. I've had a couple mid-mount Z's uh, made by Wright, and it never fails. And, and even my Ferris and some of my other mowers never fails. I always get a sweet gum ball um, that pops up in the belt. Sometimes it'll throw the belt off. Sometimes it just gets jammed in the pulley, and I can feel that vibration immediately, and I'll stop, pull it out before I have a problem. So far, I have not had any obstructions in these pulleys. I've not had to do that. Now, I don't know if that's just chance, uh, but I've mowed a lot of the same spots. Even I've got this one area that I do that's got a ton of sweet gumballs. And no joke, on the Mid-Mount Z, it just so happened to be within an hour's time, I had three sweet gumballs that popped into the pulleys. I had to stop, get off, pull them out uh, to keep it from throwing the belt off or shredding the belt. And I haven't had anything jump into these pulleys, so I don't know if maybe uh, there's a little bit more protection underneath there or if it was just luck of the draw and just sheer coincidence. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. Now the only uh, only hiccup or the only thing I've had with this mower is under the seat. I was mowing one day and uh, I shut the mower off to uh, answer the phone. And when I went to start it back up, the mower would not start. And it took about five minutes or so for me to figure out. But what I realized was this bolt right here had backed itself out. Came off the end of it and basically what it did is uh, it made this safety switch loose and so when I was sitting down on the seat it wasn't pushing the safety switch in so I threw a new nut on it and that solved that problem and that's probably just something just sheer coincidence again uh, you know the bolt was maybe a little bit loose from the factory or, or, or the nut rather and that's all there was to it so um, I did top off my hydros they, I, I wanted them to be up at the sight glass, and they were just a little bit low from the factory. And I don't know if that was something on my dealer's part, uh, didn't have the fluid in it, but I'm pretty sure it ships from the factory with the hydros in it, so I'm not passing any blame off on anybody. Uh, and it wasn't low in the sense of 
uh, a risk to operating procedures or, or out of specs or anything like that. It was just a little low by my standards and I like to keep everything topped off and uh, that way there's never any issue, there's never any doubt. I check the oil every time I fill up with fuel, doesn't matter what mower I'm using. Um, the oil hasn't been affected at all. Um, but one thing that I do want to look at, and we're going to look at it together, is I want to look at and see how well this centrifugal, um, I guess it's a, a pre-filter, I guess is what we'll call it, but it's supposed to extend the life of your filter three times. Uh, and I think in the manual, I have to double check, pretty sure the manual says you can change your air, air filter every 200 hours instead of every 100 hours. Um, but I'm going to pull this off and we're going to look at it together. So. Let me just say this before I pull it out. Um, the mowing conditions have, in the early spring were a little bit wet, uh, but here the past three weeks have been really, really dry and a lot of dust. So normal mowing conditions to what I'm used to, a lot of dust, a lot, excuse me, a lot of debris, a lot of stuff falling from the trees. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And I can tell right now this looks pretty dusty and pretty dirty. Let me just give it a couple whacks and see what happens. So, so that's pretty typical, right? Okay, that's pretty common. Um, I will say, I'm not sure that this filter is any cleaner than uh, any other filter I've ever pulled out at 100 hours. Um, I'm not saying that this centrifugal, I'm not saying that the centrifugal uh, pre-filter is not working, but. I can't tell a difference. I don't normally have big chunks of debris or chaff or anything in my air filter box. So I don't know if it's, I'm not saying it's not doing its job, but that the original filter looked pretty dusty. Now here's the, uh, here's the secondary air filter. <clears throat> this one looks super clean, no issues there. Um, so I'm not going to change my secondary air filter. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to change my secondary air filter. I might go ahead and change this one. You can see the, the dust and stuff that's built up in there. Now, from what I understand, from what my mechanic has told me, my, my authorized dealer says that uh, you're, it's really not good to use an air compressor and blow out your air filter. And that's what I always used to do. I've always done that. But I guess uh, there can be uh, water or moisture in that air compressor inside that line. And what happens is you can create microscopic holes uh, in the in the air filter, which allows dust to get in there, which then allows potential damage to your engine. And I guess it can actually void the warranty. So I don't know. I don't see that being an issue, being that it's got a pre-filter and then the secondary filter. But guys, I'm not a mechanic. I, I can't say for sure, and I certainly don't want to tell you to just blow it out and be fine. Usually in the past, I've always blown out my air filters and just blow them off. But with a, a machine like this, as expensive as they are and as cheap as air filters are, I mean, they're 20 or $25 uh, on Amazon. Uh, matter of fact, I'll drop a link in, in the description below for the ones that I use, Kawasaki filters. They fit on this, they fit on my other Kawasaki motors. Um, but I think as cheap as they are, I might as well just go ahead and replace it. Now let me get in to start talking about the technicality of this machine and my likes and my dislikes. So my likes are I've thrown absolutely everything at it. I've thrown tall grass, I've thrown thick grass, I've thrown wet grass, uh, I've thrown leaves, I've thrown, you know, uh, just all sorts of, you know, early spring cleanup, all that thick nasty stuff that, that's gone all winter and is now getting cleaned up. And guys, this mower has not slowed down a bit. Everything I throw at it, it eats up, it mulches up, it spits it out. Um, so I've had a really good um, experience with that. I haven't done a lot of leaves as far as like a leaf, leaf cleanup, so I can't say 100% but I don't feel like this deck has the blowout that some of the other right decks have. Um, and even the other decks aren't a, a terrible blowout, but if you've ever owned one or ever owned different machines, you guys know what I'm talking about when you're mowing and it kind of throws it out the front a little bit. So um, that's been, that's been uh, I've been really happy with everything. Performance wise, I've never lost power. Um, so everything that it was promised, everything in my original uh, video that I was expecting it to do, it has done. Now, if we're talking about the drawbacks, 
I'm going to be really nitpicky here, and most of this is just personal preference. So one thing, the first thing that stands out is I've lost most of my decals. I've only washed this, washed this machine uh, three times now, and by the second wash, I blew most of the decals off. Guys, the decals don't really matter to me, and I'm not putting the pressure washer like right up to it. I mean, I'm smarter than that, but they still didn't hold up. Um, now, my Midmount Z has got the original stickers on it, and I don't think I could scrape it off with a, a paint scraper. But for some reason, uh, the new decals, you can see on the deck, you know, where different decals were, and uh, they've, they've just come off. So that's why I really like these right laser cut into the metal uh, decals. You don't have to worry about those coming off. And some of them have stayed on there remarkably well. It's just some of the other ones have, have come off. So that's one thing. Again, preference, kind of nitpicky. As far as performance goes, <clears throat> two things that come to mind. The first thing is on, on the 72 inch mowers. Now, I don't know if it's the same on the 61 inch or the 52 inch, but on the 72 inch mowers, I've got the anti scalp wheel here on the back corner of the deck. Okay? And what I've noticed with that is if I'm trying to mow real close to an obstacle, uh, a fence post or a sign or something like that, where my mid mount Z. I used to be able to come in here and I could get that fence post right here between the, the rear of the deck and the tire and get as close to it as I could and just maybe give that sign just a little kiss and kind of cut down on weed eating, then I would do that. But with this wheel and this anti-scalp uh, bracket stuff here, um, you're not able to do that. So some of you guys might be saying, well, that's really not a big deal. And truthfully, it's not, okay? Um, and some of you still might be saying, well, don't be lazy, just grab a weed eater and uh, go out there and hit it with a weed eater. And guys, that's all well and good, but there's some properties that I mow that might be, you know, a three mile stretch and it might have a, a sign or it might have a post every hundred feet. And I promise you, you don't want to have to get off every hundred feet for three miles just to, just to weed it around that area. So, so that's one thing that, um, again, not a drawback, just something I've become aware of by, by using it. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is if I'm comparing this mower to the right mid-mount Z, okay, it doesn't apply to any other sit-down mower out there because I think the mid-mount Z is the benchmark for the best uh, sit-down mower for holding hills uh, in our industry. It's just my opinion. I've used a lot of different mowers, and I haven't found one better that holds hills better than the mid-mount Z. It's got a wide wheelbase, uh, low center of gravity. So when I compare this mower to that mower, I don't think it holds hills quite as well you know, when you're mowing uh, with the slope. Um, I just feel like this this mower's got a bit more torque, so it's more likely to lose traction and want to slide down. Even though it's got bigger tires, uh, it, it doesn't hold it quite as well. But one thing that I have noticed is I mow some pretty steep hills, and I'm pretty bold. I'll, I'll, mow, I'll mow a hill. I'll mow a bank. And uh, so some, usually I try to go with it, but occasionally you have to go up and down. And uh, what I have noticed with this mower is when you're cresting a hill, when you're going down the hill, most mowers I've ever used, uh, they don't have enough forward ground speed uh, without, without driving it forward. They don't have enough forward ground speed to just, to just go down the hill on their own they'll lose traction. They'll break traction and then you'll go to skidding or whatever. Uh, even with the steepest hills that I mow, I've not had a problem with this mower. It's almost like, and it's probably because it's got a 40 horsepower engine, but it wants to go, it wants to go, it wants to go. So when I come over a hill or when I'm going down a hill, I'm not pulling back on the controls. I'm not pushing forward on the controls. I'm just holding on to them just in case. And uh, this seems to go down really, really well. And I've not had, a, I've not, I've not had it break traction yet. So um, where it doesn't hold the hill quite as well uh, running parallel with it, when you run perpendicular up and down with the hill, it does better than the Midmount Z does. It does better than any other mower that I've used as far as braking traction. Uh, it doesn't break traction. You just kind of you kind of coast down the hill like you would in a, in a truck or a four wheeler or something where you gear it down. And you just let the engine control it. Just let the engine control it, and you go down. And I haven't broke traction yet. And I've done it in wet grass. Um, I've done it in, I mean, when I say wet grass, I mean like dew covered grass, not wet, like, Hey, it's been raining for a week. Um, and, uh, so, so that's been kind of a, a, a learning curve for me 
because it doesn't hold quite as well. If it wants to break traction, but what I can't get going this way, a lot of times I can get vertical going up and down or even cutting it at an angle uh, has done remarkably well. So um, the other thing I want to talk about, <coughs> and I think is on everybody's mind, is how well does the suspension seat actually work? The suspension seat is night and day difference from uh, a seat that doesn't have the adjustments, but even from the seats that have adjustments like this one does right here, the suspension seat uh, is noticeably different, okay? Um, but I will say this, it has its limitations. Just because you have the suspension seat uh, doesn't mean that you can run through a field you know, wide open. Okay. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't work that way. You still get jarred loose. You still get, and I've tried it. You still get jarred. You still get bounced around, but the fatigue is far less than a machine that doesn't have it. So you're still going to have to slow down. If you try to go too fast, you're going to get, you know, some, some squigglies in your stripes and it's, it's not going to do what you want it to do as far as outcome, but, uh, on, on regular mowing and just, just the, the, the up and down and the, and the, beating that you sometimes take from a mower, it is greatly reduced uh, with with the uh, suspension seats. Now, the only other thing that I want to say, and this isn't really comparing apples to apples, this is more apples to oranges. Um, the ZXT, the sit-down, and it's not even the ZXT, but the sit-down mower, I've got a 72-inch ZXT sit-down, I've got a 72-inch stand-on Ferris Z3X. I can get more done with my Ferris than I can with this. Um, same deck size. This one might even be a little bit faster, but being able to stand and the maneuverability and the, the everything about standing is more efficient, in my opinion, than a sit down. So if you're wanting to add this mower to your fleet as uh, your only mower, I think it would be a great option. If you've already got some mowers, some sit-down mowers, and you're wanting to add another mower for increased efficiency, the deck size is going to is going to determine your efficiency increase. But also, uh, you have to keep in mind if you're going to run a leaf back system, you're going to want the sit-down mower. But if you want something that you can use to help blow off sidewalks afterwards, or you can help, you know, uh, run one place or do something with a backpack blower, that's not really going to be this mower. Okay, I use the I use the uh, the stand on for blowing off my hard surfaces, uh, blowing off my edges. A lot of times I'll throw a backpack sprayer on and I'll ride the, the stand on out there. Doesn't apply to the same with sit down. But guys, that's it. That's my 100 hour review on this mower. I'll do another review in another 100 hours, something like that, uh, and keep track of all the different things. Maybe I can get my wife in one of these videos and uh, share her opinion versus my opinion uh, as far as her likes and dislikes compared to my likes and dislikes. But guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I want you to know that uh, if you're watching a YouTube video, some of you guys have channels, some of you don't. Guys, this is a lot of work. It is hard to do YouTube. You gotta so guys, I don't do it for me because I don't really get anything out of it. Okay, I do it for you guys. I'm trying to help you guys out. So do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, show some love in the comments. Uh, this has been a, a very tough video to make, not because of the content, but because of all the technical difficulties. So guys, that's it. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. I want you to know I love you. I appreciate you. And above all else, God bless you guys.